Hello everyone! Hi, my name is Laura. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. If you like this type of content and like my channel, I would really appreciate a subscribe. But again, I want to just thank you for stopping by and I hope you enjoy this video. I wanted to do a quick intro in case this is your first time seeing my channel. I wanted to give you a little background on my kind of fitness journey and kind of provide context going into this. Um, I've been lifting for over five years now. It's been a long while. I'm not certified or a professional in any way. I've just gone to the gym and lifted weights for a long time and kind of found what works for me, my body, my goals. So I highly suggest if you're exploring the weightlifting world to kind of, you know, do your own research, look around, see what other people are doing and try different things and see what works for your body because I think my philosophy with fitness is everyone's goals and lifestyles and bodies are different. So finding what works for you and what you want to accomplish is really important. And a big part in getting there is by trying things out, trying different exercises, different movements that you want to explore and maybe adopt into your routine. So with that being said, these are just exercises and staples throughout my journey that I've incorporated that really work for me. I hope it gives you some inspo and maybe some motivation to hit the gym and become really strong physically and mentally this year. So um, I love you. Thanks for stopping by. Let's get into day one. <laughs> Hello and welcome to day one, which is shoulders, screenshot if you need. Starting my day off with a nice little walk. I was really stagnant all day, so I just wanted to get my blood flowing and ready for my workout. Felt really good just to get up and move my body. Then heading into some dynamic stretches to warm up my upper body. It's extremely important to warm up before your lifting session because as you know, many of us are working at home and haven't been moving all day. For me, it's really important to warm up your rotator cuffs. As you know, our movement is very minimal throughout the day, usually just at your keyboard. So I like to make sure that I'm stretching them and increasing that range of motion to ensure that I'm able to perform my exercises in its full extent and therefore better strengthening those muscles. Heading into our first workout with dumbbell shoulder presses. You'll see me here. You're gonna do two warm up sets, increasing weight every time. Doing my first warm up set. As you can see here, I'm keeping my elbows slightly inward, not flared all the way out to protect those elbows, increasing weight for my second warm up set. Reminder here that your form should be looking the same regardless of the weight. And then heading into my first working set, you're gonna do four working sets here, eight to 10 reps. If by the sixth or seventh rep you are not struggling, it is time to increase weight. Don't be scared, trust yourself. You're stronger than you think. And if it doesn't work out with a higher weight, you can always go back to a more comfortable weight. And you never know until you try. So I don't know, you might surprise yourself. And sometimes, especially for me, I'm always working out by myself. So I forget to tell myself these things. So that's why I'm here. You got this, try it out, push yourself. Okay, and after that fourth set, you're going to drop weight and do as many reps as possible with a lighter weight. And holy cow, that burned. I highly suggest doing this, not just for shoulder presses like I did today, but on any other workouts if you want that final burnout. Okay, heading into our next workout, which are lateral raises. We're doing four sets here, 15 reps. Higher rep range here because we are focusing on the engagement, the mind-muscle connection, and controlling that tempo. And I truly do feel like that's the trick with lateral raises, um, focusing on engagement and those things in order to truly build your shoulders. As far as form, you want to ensure that your core is engaged the whole time so you're not using your momentum or your body to bring that weight up. Purely all shoulders. Also we're going to want to lead with your elbows. As you can see here, I have a slight bend, that top contraction, my elbows are going up and I'm in full control of that weight, whether going up or bringing it back down. I'm not frailing around and I have a little dance party after because I'm in pain but it's a beautiful pain. <laughs> Okay, next workout is going to be bent over real delt raises. We're doing four sets here, eight to 10 reps. And let me tell you, ever since I started training rear delts, it's when I saw the most growth and definition in my shoulders. Keep that core engaged and leading with your elbows, really feeling that top contraction. Next workout is front raises, four sets, eight to 10 reps. Trick here is to go slow and controlled, keeping that core engaged so you're not using any momentum to get that weight up. Again, purely just shoulders. Ending my day with some stretching, kind of cooling down from the session. I find cooling down is extremely meditative and I love spending the last 10 minutes doing this and I encourage you to do the same. 
Okay, heading into day two, which is our first lower body day of the week. Screenshot if you need. Made it to the gym today with Chris. I'm starting the day off with some dynamic stretching. These are movements I do to help prepare my body for my session. These stretches help me work into my full range of motion as I'm pretty stagnant all day. Therefore, while I'm training, I'm able to perform every exercise to its fullest extent when I have weight. So yeah, just getting loose, waking up that body, and getting it ready to really tackle this heavy lifting session. Okay, headed into our first workout, which is barbell back squats. We're doing three warm-ups here for six to eight reps. Increasing weight every set. I always like to incorporate a lot of warm-up sets for barbell back squats, especially because it's an exercise if not performed correctly can lead to serious injury. So I always like to make sure to take my time when warming up for this and really getting my form down before I really rack the weight. I just finished up my warm-up sets and heading into my first working set. Adding a belt since I'm going Heavier and it helps me have something to brace my core against and just keeps me more stable and supported throughout the movement. As far as form, I want a neutral spine, core braced, and really pushing through those heels, toes slightly pointed out. These five to six reps should be challenging, so if you don't feel like it's challenging, it's time to increase weight and really push yourself. You got this! Okay, the next exercise we're doing is sumo deadlift. You're gonna start with two warm ups for six to eight reps, increasing weight for each set. So going into my first working set, so with sumo deadlifts, you want to have a wider stance and you want the bar pretty close to your body, almost touching your shins. If it's any further than that, you have serious risk of injuring your lower back, so make sure to keep that in mind. Spine is going to be neutral. As you see, as I come down, my spine up to my head is almost a straight line. You also want to ensure you're bracing your core and taking a deep breath right before coming up and pushing through those heels. Heading into our next workout, which are glute hyperextensions, we're going to start off with one warm-up set for eight to 10 reps. Honestly, shout out to the TikTok girlies who really helped me get this movement down. I think I was struggling really hard at the beginning to feel this in my glutes. But the thing that helped me the most is treating this like a hip thrust. You're really thrusting your hips into that pad and contracting at the top. Make sure your toes are also slightly pointed out and your spine is curved. Doing four working sets here for 10 to 12 reps. Make sure to do it slow and steady. Really work on that form and engagement in your glutes. Heading into our next workout, which will be Bulgarian split squats. We're doing four sets here for eight to 10 reps each leg. As you can see here, I have one hand out just for extra stability and really pushing through those heels. I wanted to personally emphasize my glutes, so you can see my body's lean forward a lot more. If you wanted more emphasis on your quads, you'll want a straighter stance. Grabbing a heavier weight for my next set because I realized that was a little bit too easy. If you ever feel like you're not being challenged enough, I, I encourage you to do the same. Again, you're always stronger than you think, I promise. So try it out, try a heavier weight, and you could always just go back to a more comfortable weight if you don't like it. But I'm telling you, you're not gonna progress without pushing yourself and pushing your weight. You got this, I am rooting for you. Okay, heading into our last workout of the day, which are kettlebell swings, superset with goblet squats. For the kettlebell swing, ensure you're using the momentum from your hips to bring that weight up going right into goblet squats. Make sure your core is braced and you're really pushing through those heels. I also added a little pause at the bottom. Okay, and welcome, you've made it to day three, which is back and bicep screenshot if you need. Starting the day off with assisted pull-ups. I'm going to do some heavier assistance for one set as a warm-up for eight to 10 reps, and then go into my first working set. We're gonna have three working sets here for five to eight reps. Okay, going into my work first working set, and I was pretty proud of myself this day. I'm only doing 20 pounds of assisted weight, um, which is a big deal for me. I'm trying to work up to eventually do pull-ups, so I think your girl's almost there. Okay, next, heading into our next workout, which is T-bar rows. And oh my goodness, let me tell you, this has quickly become my favorite back exercise of all time. I just feel like it targets your back so well. Um, with that support bar right at your stomach area, you're able to just strictly isolate your muscles without utilizing your lower back or injuring it in a new way. Okay, just added more weight for my first working set. I've also find with machines, I'm able to, again, isolate my muscle I want to work, but also push more weight because I'm way more supported than if I were using free weights or a barbell. Okay, next workout's gonna be lat pulldowns and they're gonna be heavy lat pulldowns. 
warming up with just one set for 8 to 10 reps because I did feel pretty warmed up from my last workout. Just wanted to do one set to get my body into the movement. Going into my working sets here, as you can see, I have a wider grip. As I pull down, I'm focusing on bringing my elbows down and really pushing my chest up. Again, the rep range is six to eight, so these should be extremely challenging. Going into single arm rows, three sets, eight to 10 reps per arm. As I'm doing this before I pull the weight back, again, as you see here, I'm letting the weight fully go until I feel a little stretch in my back. This allows me to do the full range of motion. Okay, going into bicep curls. This is my first warm up set. I'm doing for eight to 10 reps with a lighter weight. Then going into my three working sets for the six to eight rep range, which means this should be difficult and it should be hard. So push yourself. Keeping that core brace to ensure you're not using any momentum to get that weight up, strictly just your biceps. Ending this day with some hammer curls. Same thing here, keeping that core braced, just using your biceps to pull that weight up. We're doing three sets for eight to 10 reps here. Okay, it's day five and we're doing chest and triceps. Screenshot if you need. Starting the day off with inclined bench, I'm gonna warm up with two sets of five to eight reps, increasing weight every single set. Ladies, don't neglect your chesties. Um, I've been finding it really rewarding being able to slowly work up to more weight with bench press and it's been really fun for me. Going into my working sets with heavier weight as I increase for my warm ups. Setting up for bench pressing, I found it super helpful to really get your shoulder blades situated on the bench first. That will act as your support as you're pushing through and pushing the weight upwards. Once I figured this out, I found that the engagement in my chest is significantly better and I'm able to push more weight because I know where to push from, from my back if that makes sense. Heading over to the chest fly machine, doing one warm up here for eight to 10 reps. Then we're gonna increase that weight and do three working sets for also eight to 10 reps. The trick here is to really take your time, have a good tempo and really squeeze that chest together when you bring those weights inward. Then heading over to the cable machine to do some tricep pushdowns. I'm starting off with a warm up of eight to 10 reps, really holding at that contraction so I can feel my triceps. Triceps have been a hard muscle for me throughout the years, but I feel like this past year, I've really figured out what works for me. And it's usually higher rep, slower tempo, and just really contracting at the bottom. And not gonna lie, looking back at this footage, I'm really dang proud of how far my triceps have come. Like, look at her pop out. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> okay, next we're heading over to the tricep extension machine. We're gonna do four sets here for eight to 10 reps. I love using machines because again, it really isolates the muscle you're trying to work and ensures you're not using any other muscle to help push that weight. Okay, and on the last working set, you're gonna drop that weight to a lighter weight and then do as many reps as possible. And holy cow, this burned, but in the best way possible. Okay, last workout of the day is gonna be push-ups, three sets for as many reps as possible. Chris and I were really pooped after these workouts. Um, it was a shorter workout than usual, but I really felt like we went really hard. So this goes to show it's not the quantity, it's the quality of your sets. But here I go, my first round of push-ups and I am struggling. Chris is trying to keep me motivated. Love having him as a workout partner, he's great. And then it's his turn. Look at him knock those out, wow. <laughs> But yeah, we did this again for two more sets and called it a day. Ended with some stretching as usual, just to cool down. And there you go, you've made it through day four. Welcome to day five, and you've made it to the last lifting session of the week, which is lower body. I was in Oregon at this time, so say hi. I'm going to the gym with my two sisters. Starting the day off with some dynamic stretching as usual, just working my body into my full range of motion as, again, I'm pretty static all day. Getting those hips open, getting my legs ready and warmed up. All these movements you're seeing, I'll do two to three times just to make sure my body's ready and until I feel that my body's all warmed up. With lifting, I feel like it's so important to ensure your body's prepped before you know pushing a lot of weight. So I like to take my time to communicate to my body through warming up that it's about to put in work. I love warming up because it transitions my headspace from a working mode to a gym mode and I get really hyped. <laughs> Okay, starting the day off with some hack squats. Um, you'll be doing four working sets. 
and with each set you're going to increase weight but decrease reps so your first set here is 12 next will be 10 next will be 8 and then 6 increasing weight every set with this workout make sure you're bracing your core and really pushing through those heels Next workout, we're heading to the barbell and doing cross glute bridges. I'm warming up with one set for 8 to 10 reps just to get my body in the motion and feeling the engagement in my glutes before going into my working sets. Reminding her that form should look the same regardless of weight. I added a band just for extra resistance and so I could feel more engagement. Adding weight for my first working set, as you can see here from my form, my chin is always tucked, slow and controlled tempo. A cost glute bridge is when you don't go all the way down, you're keeping that weight above the ground. It puts more emphasis on the glute since it has a shorter range of motion and holy cow, you could feel the engagement like crazy. Um, going into my next working set, I decided to go heavier because it was a little too easy for me. Feel free to do the same if you're also feeling that way after your first set. And after every set, I'm gonna have a 10 second hold at the top and holy smokes, this burns. My legs were literally trembling. Heading over to our next workout, which will be hamstring curls on the machine. I did one warm out set for eight to 10 reps, then switching to my working sets, which will be four sets for eight to 10 reps. As you can see here, I'm really holding at that top and taking my time to bring that weight down before I curl it up again. I found that that technique helps me get the most out of this workout and I feel the most engagement Okay, heading over to our second to last workout, which are single leg RDLs, and we're gonna go heavy for these. As you can see, I listed the six to eight rep range for four sets. After doing one set of these 30s, I decided I have been doing 30s for a while now. I'm gonna push for 50. And just like I thought, I was doing it just fine. This is another example of why Sometimes you just need to quiet that voice in the back of your mind telling you to go to what you're comfortable with Because if you stay comfortable, you're never gonna grow in the gym I promise you you can probably take more weight than you think for form here You're gonna want to ensure you're bracing your core. This is a hinge movement So as you're moving your booty should be going backwards. Keep that weight right along that shin Okay, heading to our last workout, which are glute medius kickbacks with bands. We're gonna do three sets for 15 to 20 reps. Just purely focusing on engagement here, slow and steady, feeling that contraction in your glute medius. Okay, ending my session with some foam rolling because I know this workout's gonna leave me sore, so I'm trying to mitigate the soreness as much as I can. I'm stretching my back because I've been feeling super tight and just taking time to cool down. And just like that, I've taken you through another full week of workouts and lifting in the gym. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!